Hi, I am Dr. Mamari, and I'm going to perform experiment one of Chemistry 1032 lab at Central Campus. The purpose for my experiment today is that I provide you with the data for the for experiment one, so you could complete your data sheet or the homework assignments and submit to your professor as the uh, as an assignment. Uh, I'm going to um, concentrate more on the procedure part. As I said, um, due to distance or remote learning, students cannot be in the, in the lab to perform the experiment. I perform the experiment and I take a video of what I'm doing. I will show you how I collect this data and uh, I, you are going to record your numbers based on the experiment as, as you're watching the video. Your professor, if it's going to be me or any other professor teaching the lab, can hold mini session of the uh, Blackboard Collaborate and explain about other aspects of the um, of this experiment, the theory. For example, for experiment one, I'm going to share the document. Um, it's going to um, talk about um, safety. So while you are in the lab, you have to uh, follow the safety rules, and uh, it can be explain again you can read it's it's um, the experiment is actually available to you in detail in a folder called experiment one document so the first document is the document that contains the experiment that contains the introduction theory part of the experiment how to uh, read a um, measuring device if it's a ruler or graduate cylinders for measuring uh, measuring length, you would use uh, rule, ruler or meter stick. And uh, for measuring volume, you are going to use, uh, use graduate cylinder. You could use burette. You could use pipette. The measurements in the lab involve significant figures. So when you are measuring a, a um, quantity of anything using a measuring device, you are going to um, report the number based on accuracy of your measuring device which is going to have three all the digits uh, certain digits with exceptions to one digit that is uncertain or estimated digit when you report the number with that uh, property you have it's said to be that your number report number is significant or you are reporting number with proper significant figures and anytime you are reporting a number you would have like three parts to it one certain digits one would be uncertain digit, which would be the last digit in the measurement. Um, and that would be the uncertain digit, like here would be five would be uncertain digit. In this case would be again five, and here two is the uncertain digit. Then your number is reported with the significant figure. So certain digits, everything else, like five, zero, eight here is certain digit, two would be uncertain digit. And then the last part is kilogram, which is the unit. Counting of significant figures, it will be explained to you by your professor in either lab or the, the um, lecture. So I don't want to make this video too long. So I would leave that part to your professor. So, and you can also read the document to understand how to count the um, significant figures. And when you are adding numbers or subtracting number, how would you apply the significant rules? Basically, by counting the number of decimal places for adding, and your reported number, your answer cannot have more decimal places than any given number. Or when you're multiplying, the number um, cannot have more significant figures than any of the given numbers. So if you have two and four significant, your final answer should be rounded up to significant. Um, figures. When you are measuring volume using a graduate cylinder, um, the points that you want to keep in mind, the your eye should be at the same level of the level of the liquid in a graduate in a cylinder shape equipment. That could be graduate cylinder or burette or pipette. Um, the liquid in a cylinder shape equipment stays in, in curve a shape and then when you are measuring, you have to read the number across from the lowest point of the curve, which is known as the meniscus for the for the 
level of the liquids or the lowest point of the curve, which is called the meniscus. So we are looking for meniscus and you are going to uh, read the number across from. If the, there are lines there uh, with the representing numbers, and if the meniscus falls between the lines, then you have to estimate um, the, um, the last digit. So the, the numbers, if it's exactly on the line, the last digit would be zero. But if it's, um, if it's between the lines, then depends on how close is the higher upper number or a lower number, then you have to estimate your numbers. When you are using a graduate cylinder that is a 10 milliliter graduate cylinder, you have to report the number with two decimal places. With 100 ml graduate cylinder, you are going to report with one decimal place because you could see the numbers. The numbers represent the ones place. place. So um, then you would use the tenth place uh, using the, the estimated number if it falls between the two two lines. For beakers, these are uh, equipments that they are designed to transfer liquid from one to another, um, from larger container to smaller, or when you have mixing um, a reaction mixture and uh, you don't uh, use it, they are not the best for uh, or most accurate devices for uh, measuring. Thermometers is going to measure the Temperature, of course, meter stick would measure the uh, measure the length, balances would measure the mass, and based on the accuracy of the balance, you would see one, two, three, or four decimal places, and you have to record all those numbers. Whatever you see, you would record on the on the scale. Uh, Bunsen burner or use of the Bunsen burner, you have to make sure that you have a proper ratio of Gas with air uh, combining in the um, in the Bunsen burner. So the supply from the gas comes from the wall. So you have a gas hose that is connected to the gas valve that is in the wall, on the wall, and you have a gas adjustment valve uh, in there underneath the burner. Depends on the design of the burner that you are using. Mm, underneath or on the side, they, you would have a valve to adjust it. The air valve adjustment in this case, like by Rotating this movable cylinder here, you can lower the amount of the air combining. If you don't get enough air uh, to mix with the gas that is burning, you would get incomplete combustion. And how does it show? It will show yellow color flame, and um, the flame is going is not going to be hot flame. At the same time, it's going to produce carbon monoxide, and that is not good for the lab because you are going to inhale carbon monoxide. You're going to have smoke in the lab, and also the temperature is not going to be the highest. When you adjust properly, you would two or three blue cones with different shade of the blue, and the top of the inner cone is going to be the hottest part of the uh, hottest part of the flame. If the gas is on today, I'm going to turn on the burner for you to see it. Measuring density is you're not actually measuring density; you're going to calculate density. In order to calculate density, you are going to measure mass of the object and the volume, divide mass by the volume to get the density. Units for density are gram per milliliter for liquid, gram per uh, cubic centimeter for solid, or gram per liter for gas, because density for gas is very small, so we have to take larger quantity or larger volume of the gas in order to measure the mass to be able to have reasonable uh, reasonable numbers to work with. After the um, introduction part, you have three lab questions, which you are going to complete these. And they are presented in this course as the pre-lab uh, quiz. Or um, uh, under the quizzes, you will see the pre-lab for experiment one. You would complete that. Then you have the procedure which is the major part of my work here. I'm going to follow this procedure and I will um, get the data to you or ask you to record the data as you're watching. And then when you are done with the data, you are going to complete the, so these numbers from one to basically uh, one to 13, you are going to record these numbers. Everything else is calculation, which you do it at home.
So we're just going to do complete one to um, uh, 13 here uh, for you to record the numbers in order to be able to turn in your data sheets. I'm going to stop sharing the document and I'm going to follow the procedure from printout uh, for the procedure to perform the experiment for you. Okay, first part of the experiment. Measure the volume of water in 10 milliliter graduate cylinder. Those are actually set up for us, and uh, the setup is right here. I have a 10 milliliter graduate cylinder. I'm going to bring it close to the camera so you could see what I'm talking about. This number is now. You see the numbers, number five and then six. This number is between five and the level of the liquid is between five and uh, five and six. And if you look closely, uh, one, two, three. Okay, so it's three small line over five. So we have three between three and four. So between five and six, there are 10 units, 10 smaller units, and each one is going to be 0.1. So if it's three higher between three and four line, about five, then you are going to get the number between um, 5.3 and 5.4. And that part is going to be ex uh, exact number. So it's not, uh, it's not uh, estimated. So Nobody is going to estimate this at 5.2 because it's actually over the 5.3 and is less than 5.4. So now your estimated number is going to fall under the uh, hundredth place. So the second decimal place is going to be estimated digits. So between 5.3 and 5.4. So if you can see that for the meniscus, maybe you can see it better. Um, it kind of gets blurry when I bring it closer, so I'm going to read it and we'll give you the number at this point. It's uh, it's actually, to me, is exactly at 5.3. Because it's exactly at 5.3, I'm going to record it as, um, I'm going to record it as, point zero. So for one is going to be five point three zero milliliter and then two two is the measuring the Volume in the 100 ml graduate cylinder. The 100 ml graduate cylinder also to you. That number is now between 80 and 90. So we have to count how many lines uh, over 80 or below 90. So what angle I can keep to, for you to see it better. So I have the 80, 85, 86, 87, 88. The meniscus or the lowest point is between 88 and 89. Um, it's closer to 88, but it's not exactly at 88. So I'm going to estimate it as the 88.3. 88.3 because last digit is estimation anyway so 88.3 um, milliliter that's the second one uh, three is the three four and five these are the volumes in the burette uh, basically when you are reading a burette is not that you are reading how much liquid is in the burette what you do the first burette just reading 
the number and the burette, it's the level of the liquid in the burette. So if we read here, 43.1, it's the number is increasing from the top to bottom. You have zero all the way to the top tier, zero, and then you have 50 all the way to the bottom. So 43, 43.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, Okay, so if the number from the top, increasing from the top, if I read this number, is 43.4 and is exactly on the line. So I'm going to give a second decimal place because it's asking me to record with two decimal places. And it is 43.40, 43.40. So three is 43.40 milliliter. Four is another um, direct, and the number is 23.56 between 6 and 7. So it's a, it's a, like half a day between 0.6 and 0.7. So I'm going to record it as 23.65. Twenty three point six five six five. When I say milliliter is actually wrong that to say milliliter because that's not what we have, but it's showing that uh, showing that is across from across from that line that number. So we could say it at the mark of. Uh, twenty three point sixty five milliliter, but we cannot say there are twenty three milliliter of a solution in there because the the it starts from zero unless you subtract that number from fifty and say that much liquid but that's not the purpose of using burette. The purpose of burette is reading the level so if we start from ten and then we open this stop code and we deliver or transfer ten milliliter out, it's going to come to twenty. So the difference between 20 and 10 is the, the volume of the liquid being transferred out. So basically it's a measuring device that you can, it's a graduated measuring device and it gives you an option of how much flexible number, how much you can take it out and it's very accurate. Uh, burettes and pipettes are the most accurate equipments in the, in the lab for measuring devices. For the third one, it's uh, 1.55 uh, from the top. So we have for that's the station five. One point five five. Going to write milliliter because your data sheet asks for milliliter or it says milliliter. So I'm going to um, write that. So. Next one for six is beaker. Measuring beaker is not a measuring device. Um, it's more of a transfer of, uh, you know, if you want to transfer anything less than 50 milliliter, you can use um, use uh, beaker, this 50 milliliter beaker. If you want to transfer something for a volume of around 400 milliliter or any volume between like a 100 or 50 milliliter and 400, you could use this one. The numbers are graduated, graduated numbers going up on the right side, going down the left side. So you can actually say approximately how much you're taking out or how much liquid is in the in the beaker. So for the data sheet purposes for station six, between 
the level of the liquid is between 20 and 30. It's closer to 30, so I can say this is like about 28, but 8 is the estimated number. Someone could argue with me even via that video via a camera and say, no, I think it's like 29, or you might say it's 27, but that is the point of last digit being estimated digit. And since I'm reading it now, I'm just going to say that I think is 28, but I cannot say it's 28.0 because I'm not sure about the eight. How could I say the point zero? Because then means that eight is certain digit and uh, zero is like a certain over the certain. That doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. We have to stop with the uncertain digit. So we cannot add more decimal uh, places. So six. For six, we have 28 milliliters. This is the milliliter because we are counting actually how much we have. So this one, we have between 20 and 2050. There is another line between 20 and 2050. So it's the 20, um, 200 then, and 25, between 200 and 225. So I have to estimate number like that is a between 225 is more than 200, less than 225. So 200 and I could say if it's exactly half, then I would say like around 210, 212. So that would be like an estimated digit anyway. So next seven. For measurement seven, it's going to be 210 uh, milliliter. More than 200, less than 250, and the best estimate of mine, it was 210. Uh, for eight, we are going to try to turn on the buns for them. I'm not sure if it's the gas is on or not, so I can definitely try. I told you when the design of the Banza burner is different based on the design of this Banza burner, the air valve adjustment is like if I'm rotating this um, cylinder to the right side, I'm trying, I'm closing the gap so less air is coming uh, to rotate it to the left side. I allow more air to come in and the, the amount of the air is it should be proportional to the gas that we are using, we are allowing to combine. And how do we know that is from the color of the flame. If I put too much air, this is going to start like making pop pop sound. And with that pop pop sound that is making, that means that be careful is turning off. And it did turn off. Uh, if I put too little air, it's going to give me yellow color flame. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to open it, start with the yellow color flame open it until it gets uh, it gets blue cone two or three distinct blue cones so i don't know how many you see there but there are two cones the different shade of the shade of the blue the tip of the inner cone is basically the hottest part of the flame So if I bring the a, a, a copper wire to the tip of the flame, the gas line has not been used for a long time. That's why we have such a weak flame here. So you see the top of the inner cone, it gives, it changes the copper to red. It gives like a red color. It's about to melt it. But down here is cool flame. Up here is the hottest part of the flame. That the temperature here, based on the combinations of the gas, the natural gas with oxygen is about 1500 degrees 
um, Celsius actually is a very high temperature. So, what is asking me to do here? Burner and try to when you are setting up Bunsen burner, you want to make sure that it's not too far up because if it's too far up, it would take much longer time to um, to boil. And I find small beaker that is to use it for boiling point of the boiling point of the water for the next step. Okay, holding piece of wire flame, locate the hottest part. So the hottest part of the flame was the top of the inner cone. That's the hottest part. Please write it down for part uh, eight. And then the coolest part would be close to the base. So all the way down to the base is the coolest part of the flame. The top of inner cone is the toughest part, part of the uh, hottest part of the flame. Now, for part B, uh, or the data number nine, uh, we, need the, we need the water to boil. So I'm going to go back to that for you, uh, because it's not boiling yet. So as soon as it starts boiling, I get back to that. For 10, using a ruler, so we are using ruler. We take there are like five pieces of paper here. I took the piece number one, and in order to measure the length, I'm using the centimeter because this ruler has centimeter and uh, it has the choice that uh, we are given choice of the centimeter or inches. I align the one side, one, the left side of the paper with the zero exactly, and see if it falls under uh, to what number. So the number that is from the uh, end of the paper here, from one end to the other end, is 11. And it, since it's exactly at 11, see, if it, since it's exactly at 11, um, I'm going to record it as 11.0. 11 11.0. So that is for length. A piece of paper and the paper it was number uh, number one is paper number one is eleven. Eleven point zero zero because it, it was exactly at eleven and centimeter. The two decimal places that would be eleven point zero um, zero. Okay, the water is boiling now, and since it's boiling, I'm going to. Use a thermometer, measure the temperature, and report it for part nine or data number nine. Okay. I know how. Okay, I'm not sure how, but it actually records 101 using this thermometer. So it could be due to atmospheric pressure or the water is not pure water. 
but I'm not I cannot change the numbers so I'm going to record what I got there and it was um, 101 degrees Celsius degree Celsius Okay, for 11, we're going to measure the mass of object. The mass of the object that we are using is, the object that I'm using is object number, object number 14. So you need to know the, the object number. And we are going to place it on a scale. It's not connected, I can bring it here. So I have everything in one side of me. Turn it on, you plug it in, it's on, it's uh, on, then you press the tear button. When you press the tear, it's going to calibrate and because there's nothing on it, it should show all zero. Then we place the object and it shows the number with three decimal place, and that's what the procedure is asking us to record with three decimal place, and the number is. 13.185, and that is for 11. The unit is gram. Um, that was metal object number. Number 14 for the mass. Measuring the volume. To measure the volume, we are measuring volume by displacement. What does it mean? Measuring volume by displacement. Is we are going to place a specific amount. It's not the exact number, but whatever it is, it has to be recorded exactly. Is a 10 milliliter graduate cylinder, you don't have much of a choice. It's going to be with one decimal place. So I put 25.5, so I'm going to 12, 25. 0.5 no liter. That's for 12. When I place the object inside the water, it's going to displace the water. The water is the level of the water would go up. Then I have a final reading for the volume of water. The difference in the volume from initial reading to final reading, it's the volume for object that I'm placing. Often for objects that they are irregular shape, you have to use the by displacement. You cannot measure the dimensions and then get the volume by formula. You have to basically use by displacement. If the liquid doesn't react, doesn't dissolve the sample, then you can use this um, this method. And it has to be more the solid must be more dense than the water. The liquid also, otherwise it will float rather than sinking. So it went to 30.0. So 13. Is 30.0 milliliter. 
we have the volume now. You can read in milliliter, but because it's solid, can then translate that to cubic centimeter. One milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. The volume for um, solid object is expressed in cubic centimeter or cc, and for liquid is expressed in milliliter. But numerical value is the same. For every milliliter, you get one cubic um, centimeter. Okay, you have all the numbers for your calculation. So I'm going to, um, at this point, I'm going to stop the recording. This is the end of experiment one. It's not a very long experiment, but read the, the introduction part, ask questions from your professor if you have any questions regarding the theory part of this um, experiment. Thank you.